Hey everyone, welcome back to the Automation Show. My name is Sean Tierney from Insights and Automation, and you can see I've kind of moved the studio around a little bit. We're going to be having vendors come in and uh, demo products uh, with me in the future, so I need to move things around. But in today's show specifically, we're going to take a look at a Siemens S7-1200 G2 Generation 2. So, you know, we've had Lewis on the show a few times talking about all the features, but now we actually have one that Siemens has sent in for us to take a look at. And my plan is we'll uh, unbox it, we'll zoom in on it, we'll take a look at the physical uh, hardware, and then we'll wire it up into my suitcase trainer. And uh, then we'll write a program. I think I need V20 for it. So I'll have to install V20 and then we'll write a program and uh, see if it's any different. I, I suspect it's going to program identical to the G1, Generation 1 S7-1200, which we have a room full of in the other room. If you need any Siemens or Rockwell hands-on training, we do have a training room here, plus online courses over at theautomationschool.com. But uh, in any case, hey, I want to get a program in this. I want to get it wired to the suitcase and uh, just want to, you know, give you guys uh, a good look at this new PLC. Now, I will also be doing an after show for members. Thank you, all the members who uh, give five, uh, 10 or $25 a month to support the channel. Um, we will have a special members only show after this. Um, we'll get some outtakes and um, some other thoughts and, and some opinions that have come in from you, the viewers, about what, you know, what you like and don't like about this new PLC. But in any case, before we do any of that, let's go ahead and do a uh, an unboxing here. And this is not a starter kit. It's just a, a CPU. So here, let me zoom in on the uh, unit itself. And then you can see the article number. And that's uh, like a catalog number for you who are like me in the U.S. And let's zoom in some more here. And we can see, you know, it's a CPU 1212C. AC DC relay, uh, eight digital in, six relay out. So we back out just a little bit, a little bit more. And let's open this up. Now I already broke the seal here this morning. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. And we'll put the box one side here. And this guy is, this is what it looks like. This is the front. It's very thin, but taller, right? And so let's open up here and we can see the inputs right there. We can also see the uh, memory card slot and QR code. And then there's our two Profinet or Ethernet ports at the top. Okay. And you can see all indication. Of course, this supports NFC. All right. Let's look at the bottom here. We can see our outputs and our power. Okay. And to put these off, I'm going to push back on both of those levers. Okay, and it kind of self ejects. Okay, and then to put them back on, just put it back in there like so. Uh, a little difficult when you're holding it up at an angle there. Okay, there we go. And now I'm just going to push down. Okay. And now it's back in place. Okay. Let's do this guy. Let's see. Forward to release. Yank it out. Okay. You can see that ratcheting mechanism there. All right. Put it back in. And I'm not going to push on the orange. Push on the black terminal block. And it goes back in. Just like that. And they are color coded as we talked about in the earlier podcast. Yeah. We pull it out. All right. And let me turn it upside down. I'll put it back in. Okay. I'm sure after you use it for a while, you get better at it. So that's my first time taking those out and putting them in. But in any case, uh, here we have the slot here for an expansion module. And if I take these out, take the doors off, take that out. Okay. 
There's a very small, it's hard to see because of the lighting, but there's a very small jack in the back there. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it. But way down in the back there for your expansion module or your signal board. And I guess we can take a look at the left here at the label. Okay, got the venting on the top and the bottom and nothing on this side. No expansion slots or anything like that. Okay, of course on this side, just like with the Gen 1, you can take that cover off and that's where you can put your expansion cards. Okay, excellent. So next thing I'm going to do here is, let's go back to full screen. Next thing I'm going to do here is get this all wired up. Matter of fact, I'll leave the doors off. And um, I'm going to do this like high speed so that uh, you guys don't have to watch me put every wire in. I'll do it really quickly and then uh, we'll power it on and see if we get good lights. And then we'll go over and write a program for it. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got it all wired up in the suitcase trainer and powered on. Everything's looking good. So let's go over to the computer here. And I actually installed version 20. It took a little while, but you can see it there. I also put my activation on for basic. And so we should be ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up TIA portal. And of course, we were talking about this on LinkedIn earlier in the week. I did take a snapshot every step of the way. Of course, you can always delete unneeded snapshots, but um, if you don't have them, you can't go back to them, right? So I always try to make a snapshot whenever I need it. It's something we were talking about quite a bit. Uh, somebody had their uh, one of their VMs die. You also want to back up your VMs too, right? Back them up. I back mine up annually, and then I clone them. So I'll, when I'm done with 24, I'll clone it, call it 25, and I'll use that as my uh, next VM. And that way... You know, been using VMware for over 20 years, so that way if um, if something goes wrong, you know, I have it. So let's go ahead and call this. I'm just going to call it S7-1200-G2, and I'm just going to leave everything else the same. We'll go ahead and create. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open the project view here. All right, I'm going to add a new device. You guys have seen me do this many times before. Let's do a S7-1200 G2 CPU, and I'm going to do unspecified. Okay, let's open that guy up, because I have it here on the network. Actually, I did not plug the network cable into it, so I'm going to have to do that. Let me do that right now while this is loading up. Okay, I got it plugged in, and I can definitely see having to redesign these trainers, because... I don't think I have any other PLCs where the uh, RJ45 connectors are on the top. So very interesting there. Just barely had enough room to get a standard cable in. But in any case, let's go ahead and do a detect here. Let me just check, make sure everything's still working. And it should be on the network. And let me go ahead and choose my network cable. And we'll search. There it is. I found it. I could flash it if I want to, but we've done that before. I'm not going to do that. So now I'm going to detect it. It says it has to add a separate address. Yeah, please. Which is common. We've covered that over the years with the Siemens. I like how even if the PLC is on a different subnet, you can reach out to it, grab it. I don't have to run a separate utility. And so um, it just works. And I've never had a conflict with that extra IP address that it grabs because uh, I just haven't, you know. Okay, so you can see here. Yep, I'm just going to connect. It says, hey, things ain't matching up. Hey, it's a brand new one out of the box. Then it's asking me, do I want to save that setting? Yeah, I do, because I'll be using that again. 
And now it should be adding it to my project. Again, I'm looking at V20. Don't see a lot of difference between it and V19 or 18 or 17. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of new things in here. I'm not going to protect. This may come back to bite me, but I'm not going to protect it. And I will finish. I always worry when I do those things. Like it might come back later on. Oh, you didn't have a password in there, so nothing works. But in any case, all right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and go into our blocks here, OB1. And let's put together a very simple program. I think I'm all set up for PB1 to be a start and or stop. So it should be normally closed. It's been a while since I did this. Probably a couple months here. Let's just do a very simple circuit here. Um, let's go ahead and put this together. All right. And then, you know, I never did define my I.O. Let's go back to device configuration and we'll go to the I.O. tags and we're going to call this one stop. Just going to keep it really simple for now. Start. I like to give my students start files so they can have all the long or very descriptive tag names. But for a demo like this, I'm just going to we'll just call this M1. That'll be my pilot light. And uh, okay, great. So let's go back to OB1. And let's see what we got here. Stop. Start. Just trying to keep it simple. I don't, I don't think we're going to see any differences here between... And I think that's the point, right? Smaller, faster, but programs just like what you're used to having. Okay, let me go ahead and select this guy. Let me go ahead and... Let's compile the whole thing here. I'm sure I'm going to have no errors. Oh, yeah, I do have an error. And, you know, they're trying to, you know, make you have more secure systems. So you can see here, anonymous. Yeah, I understand this, but you know what? I'm just working on the bench here. So let's make him a PLC administrator. PLC I don't think it needs to be a user. He can just be an administrator, right? Let's see if that works. Let's try it again. So that's something you didn't have to do in the older versions. But you know what? With all the hacking going on and, you know, nation-sponsored hacking and, uh, you know, malware and ransomware, it's good to have a good security, uh, you know, in your PLCs these days. But for just testing on the workbench, we're not going to do that. So let's go ahead and download. Okay. Load it up. Okay, now I can finish. Let's go ahead and open OB1 again. Let's go ahead and monitor. Okay, and now we're online and we can see that my stop button is normally closed. Let me toggle that a couple times. All right, so that's good. That's the way it should be. And now if I press the start button here, I should get my output. Great. Now let's go ahead and switch cameras here to the overhead cam. And let's give that a shot here. You know what? Let me uh, get rid of my face because it's blocking the buttons. <laughs> All right. Great. So, uh, yeah. So here we can see the indicators. They're very bright. And stop. Start. See, uh, that's M1, what we're using for M1, that pilot light. I have another normally closed right here as well. And so that was actually pretty easy. Let me go back to full screen here. That was pretty easy. I am going to say that wiring it the first time, like wiring any PLC, there's a learning curve there. I'm sure I could get good at it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just like... You know, the first time you wire anything up, it's kind of like, oh, how does this work? Why, you know, and you have all those questions. And I did have uh, putting the Ethernet cable in because my, uh, my um, you know, trainer here wasn't designed to have Ethernet at the top. There was, it just barely fit. I didn't have to remove the DIN rail or readjust anything. But in any case, uh, this is kind of a prototype. And um, yeah, so it'll have to change to accommodate that to give it a little bit more room because it's a little tricky to get in there. But with that, I have to say that, uh, you know, I'm very thankful for Siemens for sending this over 
so I could try it out, unbox it, wire it, and, and share it with you guys. Um, just like any with anything else, installing a new version of software, make sure you give yourself plenty of time because it does take a while. And, um, you know, of course, I'm running on a VM too, so it has less resources than my, my uh, native computer would have. But in any case, uh, there's so many things I'd like to try with this. Let me know what you'd like to uh, like to see. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and call it an end of this video. I'm going to do a uh, members-only edition or add-on after show uh, right after this. But in any case, I just want to thank you all for tuning back in. And I uh, really appreciate you guys. I want to wish you all good health and happiness. And until next time, my friends, peace.